Okay, what's going on guys, welcome back to another video, in today's video we're here for Furry Ren Beyond Journeys In, Episode 5. Uh, the first four episodes were incredible, and um, you guys' support on those four episodes was also absolutely incredible, and so I am uh, very excited to see where we go with the series. Uh, last episode, we um, we met up with Aizen again, which he's still alive and kicking. A little bit older, a little bit slower, but he is still alive, and that was, that was just great to see. And the flashbacks and just everything from those episodes was so well put together all the story detail just it was just a fantastic episode animation storytelling storyboarding everything just came together perfectly and made a perfect stretch of four episodes it was absolutely fantastic and uh, Aizen's request to um, Freerun was to go to the land uh, that people call heaven or Ariol, uh, Arioli, Ariol however you pronounce it, uh, that Flam had written in her notes, and to go and speak to Hemel. Uh, however, that is where the current Demon King's castle is. And I said in my last episode, but I don't think we're going to get to that straight away. I think that that is going to be a long... In the background, like, that is our main quest. Like, if, if we're talking, like, in terms of, like, an RPG, that is our main quest. And along the way, we're going to complete a bunch of side quests as well. On our way to the main quest. I don't think we'll be getting to the main quest anytime soon. But uh, I could be proven wrong. Who knows? We shall see what ends up uh, happening there. But uh, I think in my mind it makes the most sense for the final quest to be to go and talk to Email, who she wished she would have gotten to know better and things like that. Uh, so yeah, I think that's all I wanted to say. So without further ado, let's hop straight into Free Run Beyond Journey's End, Episode 5. Okay, yeah. Uh, so we're right back here. Okay, so they're giving us a little recap. One thing I didn't really comment on, um... Oh. Uh, what I was gonna say there before I just, like, totally stopped talking. Um, I- one thing I didn't really comment on is the backgrounds. It, the backgrounds are very much Mushoku Tensei-esque. Like, the way they're, like, extremely detailed and look gorgeous in, like, every scene. It feels very Mishoku Tensei-esque, the way they draw the backgrounds in this show. <laughs> it did. That one one-hundredth changed her. Yep. For her, this has been a short span of her life. Like a very short span, and yet she has changed so much already. With Hemel, the death of Hemel, the death of Hyter, taking Farron as an apprentice, so much has changed her already. I love this OP. I know a lot of people have mixed opinions about it, saying it doesn't fit the show. I disagree, honestly. Maybe it's just because I'm a big Yasobi fan that I'm a little biased, but I love this OP. It's fantastic. Phantoms of the Dead, that sounds ominous. So I wonder if the reason she's so, uh, uh, that, that also, I, I didn't even think about that really. This journey also has influence for Farron too. It's not, this is not just Freerun's journey. Freerun might be going to see Himel, but Farron can also go see Hyther. Like she can go see him as well. So there is stakes in this journey for her too. It's not just following Freerun for 10 years anymore. It's, I can also go see the like essentially my father like he was basically a father figure even though obviously she had parents before then the way their relationship grew she essentially he essentially became like her father figure or she he she could go see her actual parents either or if she goes on this journey with freerun so there is definitely a pretty big reason for her to go here I wonder if we're going to meet that guy anytime soon. The red-haired guy from the OP. 28 years of the death of Hemo the Hero in the Willy region located in the Central Lands. So yeah, we're definitely going to take a lot of pit stops before we get anywhere near the northern part of this uh, world. Taken by ghosts. 
Interesting. Yeah, so seeing a ghost would not be an undead for sure. I love another thing, sorry. Another thing I haven't commented on in the four episodes, but it's something I was like, it was in the back of my mind at all times. The sound work for this show is so well done. Like, the just the sound of them walking up the um, stairs there sounded so real. It sounded like there was legitimate people walking up the stairs. And, like, just overall, the sound work of this show is something that I haven't seen get praised enough, honestly. I think that they're doing a fantastic job with that. What kind of monster would bring back the ghosts of dead people? <laughs> I'm like, yo, I'm a good girl. Wow, Farron. Jesus Christ. Taking shots here. Ah, uh, okay. So maybe this monster, like, reads their minds or something and gets, like, a memory of a person from their past life and throws out an illusion of that person. So, it, like, freaks them out and makes them think there's a ghost and then they maybe, like... Kill, kill the adventurers with the people who go up there. That's why a bunch of people have gone missing. That would make sense. Yeah. That would do him. Ein Sam. Interesting diet there. Only humans. I mean, come on. After the movie, so obviously they aired, the four episodes were aired as a movie. Which, like, that's gonna have movie level quality because they had time to produce it as if it was a movie. But now we're just in the regular episodes. And the animation still looks as flawlessly gorgeous. Like, there hasn't even been, like, a big, like, battle scene or a big, like, animated scene. It's just the simple movements of the characters and like these montage scenes of like them just jumping over these stones and it looks so smooth the character movements look so real it's just a testament to how much effort and detail they really put into the show yeah you can just dispel the illusions really quickly yeah that'll be easier said than done Yeah, what if they show you Hyter, though? Or your parents? That's scary. That is actually very scary. They show you a ghost of someone from your life and have them, like... That is actually terrifying. That's... I don't... Like, being put in that situation, you could say, like, beforehand, like Farron is doing now, like, I would shoot him. It's no problem. I know they're fake. But when you're put in that situation and you are face-to-face -face with somebody that you know is dead, but you really care about... Like, it would not be that simple. Yeah, we might be seeing it soon. Well, that was cool. We should just got out our staff like that. Ah, uh, yup, there you go. Shoot it. Uh-oh. Oh, no! Yeah, see? Oh my god, it's- oh, that's crazy. So yeah, they get some kind of memory from the person's life, because it's currently playing on that memory we saw earlier in the episode. This is, um, not ideal, honestly, because I don't know if Farron's gonna be able to do this, because we literally saw her having a dream about the memory where he said that if she was a good girl, he would come to see her. <sighs> we'll see how this goes. Freerun might have to do it for her, honestly. No, you can't lower your guard. It's even got a hold of your memories. Well, at least she recognizes that. Oh, what? I saw that text. She slept with the staff he gave her every night. Man, that's really sad. She got to do it for her. Uh oh. Oh no. Well, hello, email. I feel like Free Ren won't have any draw, any, any, any troubles here. Definitely. He's not even saying anything, he's just staring at her. Holy! I was it necessary to use that much? Oh, yep, there you go, they've exposed him. That is a crazy villain, honestly. But, that was interesting. I love how... Farron's was like trying to tell her that like she's been a good girl and it was like hi to her like complimenting her and stuff But when it came to free runs, he said shoot me. It's like 
it's almost as if Hemel wouldn't let this... What they call it? What, what did they call it again? Oh god, I've totally forgotten what they called it. Hang on, I'm gonna go back. Okay, the Einzum. Okay, I gotta, I gotta know. I feel like I was saying something, but then I went back to figure out what the thing was called, and um, now I forgot. Oh, I was talking about Hemel. Uh, I was, I was saying like Hemel wouldn't let the Einzum like corrupt him and try and. Uh, manipulate free run it's like it's like almost he was going against that because he immediately told her shoot me and she was like that's something Hima would say interesting interesting it's just like it's just like she said you e even if you know it's a fake even if you know at the bottom of your heart that it is a fake it is not easy to shoot them and it doesn't feel good after either it's just a lingering effect of killing someone of literally having to shoot somebody you loved at one point like that's just how it is, and it makes total sense that it's like that as well. Aww, I like that. Let's go see the real Hyter, because obviously that's where they're headed. But uh, like I said, I feel like we've got a long ways till we get there. 28 years of the death of here in Regal Canyon. Ooh, dragons. Neither have we, in, at least not in this world. It's just got a grimoire in its nest. Oh, God. Oh, uh, okay. I'm super high. Oh, let's go. Okay, it just clicked in my head. It took a second. But it just clicked in my head that we're going to be getting a crazy action scene, and I am so ready for it. If they cut away from them killing this dragon, I'm going to be upset. No way they're going to take it out that easily. Welp, it just totally deflected her attack. And now it's awake. <laughs> <laughs> but she's hiding behind a tree. <laughs> oh my god. That is um, pretty terrifying. Is she running for her life now? Yeah, she oh, she's riding on her broom. <laughs> she rode the hell out of there. Oh, but she's so casual about this. Oh my god, I love how casual, how casual Freerun is about this. She's like, I've taken out a dragon or 70 in my day, so this this is nothing. <laughs> She's too scared, she doesn't want to come back. Ah, yeah, this is where they meet the red-haired guy. Yep, I think I've heard that name too, after I watched the first four episodes. So I think that is the guy I'm thinking of. Oh! He's Aizen's apprentice. Well, looks like we're going to pick up this Stark fellow. <sighs> Why do you want that, Freeran? Why do you want that? She said it's a grimoire she's really been wanting. Why? <laughs> That's the same response she's given every time she says that. Every t every time Farron says that, she goes, she goes, you really do love magic. Freeran's always just like, it's my hobby after all. The same thing. I think she said that at least like three or four times at this point. Mm. Oh, Jesus Christ. So yeah, it's a serious problem. He looks pretty young too. He's definitely like Farron's age. Even in the OP, he looked like he was Farron's age. Really? All he had to do was go and stand in front of the dragon, and it intimidated this dragon more than enough for it to not come back in three years? I mean, that makes sense why they haven't been attacked, but like, damn. This dude scared that dragon that badly. Honestly, when I saw him in the OP, this is not the voice I was expecting. But, uh, what, what voice actor is this? I recognize the voice actor, but I, f I forget, I forget his name. Damn, okay, you guys are gonna have to remind me what the voice actor's name is, but this is definitely a very famous voice actor. I've heard it millions of times at this point. Oh! So it's the same voice actor used for Yuichi from, uh, Tomodachi Game. And I'm pretty sure there's probably others as well, but the main one that I'm thinking of is Yuichi from Tomodachi Game. Which is, the stark difference between those characters is kind of wild, honestly. You're talking to a person who's lived thousands of years. <laughs> Do you recognize her? Okay, yeah. So Aizen must have spoken about her at some point. Oh, 
She wants the Grimoire has. <laughs> the same response she has for everybody. Well, to Freerun it is. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> okay. I'm I'm beginning to I'm beginning to realize why she collects spells. It's not just a hobby. She did it because they enjoyed her spells. Her like random little spells that like uh, that are almost like party tricks that she could show people. Like she just made that those rocks um uh, like break dance and they loved it. And that's why she developed this hobby. It, well, saying it's not a hobby is wrong. It is a hobby, but it's a hobby built off of the memories she had when they liked her spells that she found. Her, like, random little goofy spells that she would perform to them when they liked them. That's what created this hobby for her. So it is a hobby. Saying it's not a hobby was the wrong choice of words. But there's reasoning behind the hobby as well. Is that reason enough for you? <laughs> Probably. This guy's interesting. Ah. <laughs> uh, so he was actually just putting up. A... <sighs> I don't know how I didn't see it sooner. I don't know how I didn't see it pick it out sooner that he's just a total fraud. I don't know how I didn't pick it out sooner. I don't know how. I don't know how after all his grandstanding and acting tough and shit. I don't know how. But, all things considered, all things considered, he is a student of Aizen. He is strong. He might just be terrified of monsters, which is the problem. But he is strong. There's no way any student of Aizen who defeat a, a person of the party who defeated the Demon King, there's no way he would let him be weak. He's definitely strong. He's just obviously scared to fight monsters. <laughs> and then everybody celebrated him. <laughs> uh, oh god! <laughs> I had been thinking that maybe, like, maybe a romantic relationship would form between Stark and, and Farron because they seem like they're similar in age, obviously. I think Farron is like 16 to 18 at this point, something around that age. I might be wrong, uh, but I think it's just something something around 16 to 18. Um, and then Stark seems like he's around that age too, so I thought maybe there'll be something romantic there, but she seems to absolutely despise him because he's a coward. <laughs> but I have a feeling that even if she despises him now, down the line, it will probably end up turning into something romantic in, this, in, in a way that like, the whole point of this story is Freerun is taking a, we're taking a very small piece of Freerun's life and watching it play out. And so I feel like we're going to have to see the dynamic between Freerun and watching Farron grow up. And so I feel like a part of that will probably end up being her finding a romantic partner. And um, if it was going to be anybody, I would assume it's another one of the main characters they're introducing right now. Uh, that being Stark. Because I mean, he's literally, okay, he's not in the art I have put up right there. But I had another um, art picture that I was considering using, and um, Stark and Fr Stark and Farron were both in there, so I know he's going to be a main character. So, well, anyway, all of that and that entire spiel was just to say we'll see how their relationship develops down the line. But right now, she seems to absolutely hate him. <laughs> yeah, he's strong. He's just terrified of him. <laughs> just sitting there. No way he cut that. If he cut that, he is insanely strong. Okay, I think they were trying to imply that he cut them. I mean, to be to be fair, to be fair, I totally understand being nervous in this situation. Like, you're going up against a literal dragon. I would probably be in Stark's shoes. I'd be terrified. Like, Freerin and Farron have their fair share of, like, combat history. They literally fought, like, a, de a warrior from the Demon King's army. Like... That's experience you can't get anywhere else. So Farron is obviously experienced, and Freerun has lived for forever. But for Stark, he's just someone who trained under Aizen and has no experience. 
So I can totally understand being absolutely terrified to go fight this. Dude. Oh my god, this food. This food looks so good. This is making me so hungry. I'm gonna have to go get some food after I finish recording this. Because, oh my god. That food looks so damn good. Uh-oh. Does she hate being reminded about it? <laughs> she seems to hate being reminded about her first battle against monsters. <laughs> oh, is it back? What the hell was that? Mm. So the dragon realizes that even if Stark might be terrified, he is actually extremely strong. Like, extremely strong. She going to check it out? Oh, that's why he trained him. He related to him. Interesting. Oh my god! This show. This show. Oh my god, this show. That was... That was better... Better animated than like half of the action shows from like any... Literally any anime. You could take any anime and you would say you would still look at that and be like, that's better than most of them. <laughs> like, like what the hell? It's just so consistently amazing. Farron can- yeah, yeah. This dude is a absolute beast. Okay, that was another great episode. This definitely felt like more of a build-up episode, which is not to say that it was bad in the slightest. This was another great episode. I loved the whole phantom scene. Like, that just... That was so intriguing that there's villain or villains, monsters like that in this world. And, um, I don't know. I'm just very excited to see where things go with Stark. And I'm assuming next episode, the fight against this dragon is gonna go absolutely insane. Every fight we've had in this show, which is few in number, but every fight that we've had has been animated gorgeously. Like this one scene on the screen right here from Stark just swinging at this like little cliff or I, I don't know if, I don't know what you would call it at this point. It's not really a cliff anymore. He's like cut into the cliff, whatever you would call it. Um, but he's cut into it and that was animated gorgeously and it was just him cutting into it a little bit more. So I have no doubt in my mind that this show is going to excel in the animation next episode. And uh, I'm very intrigued to see how Stark's relationship develops with both Freerin and Farron. We're going to see how their relationships develop. I talked to, I went on a whole spiel earlier. I went on a whole spiel earlier, so I won't do it again, about what I think is going to happen with Farron and Stark's relationship, but I think it's very possible, very far down the line, I don't think it'll happen anytime soon, but maybe d farther down the line, uh, they could become a romantic thing, but who knows. That is me jumping to conclusions very quickly, they j literally just met in this episode, but knowing, it's just like, I have such expectations for anime at this point, because they're known to do like that like that is like something anime is known for is having like characters fall in love in like two seconds after meeting each other and so i just feel like it's almost instinctual that i think something like that is going to happen but i know freyren i know how well the show is written and i know that they actually progress their characters in a realistic way and so i don't think they would do it that quickly if anything's going to happen it's going to happen much further down the line um but i do think that that is going to wrap it up for my reaction to freyren beyond journey's end episode five I hope you guys did enjoy, and I hope you all have a good day.